beautiful North Vancouver Island. We're at Port McNeil for a lumberjack competition, part of Orca Fest. The saws are going to be loud, fast, and furious. The axes are going to be flying with lots of hard-hitting action. Get ready for another bullseye right here on Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, professional quality, ask any pro, Crown, protect, maintain, save, Bodog, be a player, Red Pine Wilderness Lodge, simply unreal fishing. We're up here in North Vancouver Island, Port McNeil, a fantastic place for tourists to come from all over the world and a world-class fishing destination. You want to come for some salmon, some halibut, this is the place to come. With my co-host Rod Cumberland, Lumberjack Sport Analyst. And Rod, this economy is not just built around world-class fishing. No, actually forestry is one of the biggest industries out here on the west coast. and. Uh I graduated from UMB Forestry and a lot of the guys that I graduated with are actually employed out here. Now we're looking for a great finish to this competition. Look at that leaderboard. Dave McLeod, originally from Cape Breton, 350 points. Yeah, that's right. Dave is out in a commanding lead right now, but only a win away. Mitch, Brad and Nick can, can take him. This week we're looking at the underhand chop and the hot saw. Those are, uh, well, the underhand shot, first of all, the guys from Australia, they're going to be the guys to beat. No question. The Aussies will be the strong people to watch in the underhand shot. But, man, the hot saw event, as we know, great, exciting event. But anyone can take the hot saw. We're up here in beautiful northern Vancouver Island, Port McNeil, where the weather can be absolutely anything. Certainly Dave McLeod is hoping for a sunny finish to his competition at Orca Fest. He's leading the way with 350 points, but there's three guys hot in his heels, and the rain has started to come in right now. The underhand chop is about to get started. We've got six competitors, three heats of two. The first heat is going to feature Terry Basso and Angus Brown. Now, Terry Basso has been around for a lot of years, a lot of experience. I'm sure he's chopped in the rain before. Angus Brown is a brand new chopper, probably never even chopped in the rain. That's right, into boots, he probably doesn't have a really good axe. A lot of times you watch these guys chop and you wonder why in the world are they not chopping faster. Angus, is uh, this is his first time chopping. Nobody's going to give him a $400 axe, their best axe out of their box. And you can see here on his axe, it looks like uh, somebody's rigger axe or it's a beater axe, what we call them. So he's swinging with an axe that's really not uh, razor sharp. It's not a beautiful axe to run with. He's also using a bit of a clubber style as well. Now, I don't know if that's what he's being taught or that's what he's trying. Some guys have been very successful, like Matt Bush from New York is a clubber as well. He's sliding his hands very, very little. The rain is also impacting the sliding of the hands, isn't it? Yeah, you talk about sliding in the hands. Um, Terry Basso, I saw him covering his handle when he first came out here. And, of course, he had chalk on it. Well, that's actually a real no-no in underhand chalk in the rain because it makes a real gooey mess on your handle. So that's he's got to be regretting that move right now. Coming up on one minute, the guys are really struggling. Now we're coming up on two minutes. This wood is really hard and dense. Yeah, hard, hard chopping. Again, they're talking earlier, but chopping for a minute and a, a half, almost two minutes here now. It looks like Terry's broken it through, but the last few drivers, oh, there it is, it's broken for him at two minutes. Clock stops at two minutes, point six zero. .60. Okay, and hats off to Angus Brown, sticking with it in the rain with a beater axe, finishing off his underhand chop. Terry, the conditions couldn't be much worse, but you're, uh, you're an Islander guy. Uh, just tell me about underhand chop in a pretty tough piece of wood in the rain. Well, the wood was tough. The rain made the hand, I've never chopped with such a slippery handle. My forearm's killing me just from trying to grab it. I put chalk on, I think it made it worse, like a lubricant. So it's a tough, dangerous chop, and uh, I never wanted to, I'll never do that again. And at the end there, you stepped off a couple of times, thinking you were, their last, next blow would be the last blow. What happened there? Really good judges here, so you have to be careful, make sure your block's completely severed. And it fell, but I don't think it was completely severed, so I had to give it a couple of more blows. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Heat number one is in the books. We have four choppers still to come, and they happen to be the four guys on the top of our leaderboard. There is our leader, Dave McLeod. He's being chased by Nick Russell, Brad Delosa, and Mitch Hewitt. Still to come in the underhand chop, and these guys are all set to go. They've battled against each other many times in the past. That's right, and actually back in university days, Dave McLeod was at the University of New Brunswick in the early 90s. 
And of course, Nick Russell didn't get there to a little bit later, but both uh, trained both these guys years ago. And here they are going head to head in the underhand chop. Excellent pace by both guys. Obviously in good shape and been practicing. Nick Russell about to make his turn on the backside. A little bit narrow there for Dave McLeod and his front side. Oh, and Nick uh, takes a step off. He has a, a nice switch from side to side. Not quite as fast as what you saw Dave McLeod just do there. But usually when you take that slower step, you have a good driver to open up your face on the second side. Russell is way ahead at this point. Looks like he's going to lower the time to be considerably here. He's come up to the 42nd mark. Now Dave McLeod a little bit narrower. Here goes Nick putting the last drivers in. Oh, and there he is off at 41.3. Fantastic shot for Nick Russell. Dave McLeod finishing things off with a solid shot trying to stay on top of the leaderboard. You made a couple of quick comments there to me about a punk log and a well-grounded axe. Just tell me about those two things. Well, the lock uh, block was pretty nice. And uh, Mitch was fortunate enough to do a new axe up for me and uh, it cut nice and good, I thought, so for this hardwood. That was a come from behind victory. Dave turned before you and I was kind of thinking Dave was going to beat you on that. But so uh, it came apart, came apart nicely in the back, eh? It did. I uh, hit there, and all of a sudden it just started to move. I was going to make one more hit, but it was done, so I just walked off. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Missed the underhand chop. The wood is a little bit wet. That might be a factor, but just uh, run me through exactly what you're doing here with the log and the preparation. Yeah, I'm just quartering the log, I guess. I'm splitting it this way in half, and splitting it this way in half, so I guess you get the four quarters, and uh, that way I can work out the center of my log and work out where I want my cuts to end up. And then, uh, yeah, once I've marked it out, I'll finish my foothold. Here we go, our feature heat. Two world-class underhand choppers. 41-33 is the time to be set by Nick Russell in that last heat. But now we got Mitch Hewitt and Brad DeLosa. Who do you like in this one? Oh, man, no question. Brad DeLosa is the underhand chopper at this show. Obviously, lots of room here. 41 seconds of time to beat. They're not worrying about that time. They're just going to put in a really solid chop. Well, he's the guy to beat Mitch Hewitt. His specialty is a springboard shot, but he's no slouch in underhand or standing block as well. He's going to give Brad a run for his money. Brad bigger and stronger and hitting that wood guard. And Brad makes a turn to the front backside first. Oh, yeah, he's really swinging well. I saw he had a two tie axe before he started. He's chopping this wood really well, putting good hard drivers in here. Now he's going to go for the break. Three drivers by Mitch Hewitt on his front side before he made his turn. He's considerably behind this point. Brad DeLosa is going to win this underhand shot. Brad DeLosa comes off in 27.89 and wins the underhand shot. Mitch Hewitt's going to finish second. Two world-class shoppers, really tough wood, but they made a great show of it here on the underhand chop. I counted the first 12 strokes, you and Mitch. Mitch is a good chopper. You guys have head-to-head -head even up, but you're further along, you're further into the wood. Is that axe selection or is that just strength? Oh, I don't know, probably a little bit of both, you know, like we would have been both giving it all, so um, I don't know, yeah, the, the axe was cutting pretty well. That wasn't terrific wood, that, but um, yeah, the axe seemed to take to the wood pretty well and yeah, come up with the win. And on the backside, uh, you were pretty pleased with uh, your performance. Uh, you know, you made your turn, uh, well, probably five or six strokes ahead of Mitch. Yeah, well, when, um, you know, I sort of knew out of the corner of my eye where Mitch was up to, so, um, yeah, I didn't do any silly in the back, just made sure of a good, consistent cut. So, yeah, yeah, it was, it was okay. It wasn't a terrific cut, but it was, yeah, good to come out with the win anyway. There it is. The underhand shop is all finished for this show. Nick Russell, Dave McLeod finishing third and fourth. The leaders right now in the underhand shop, Brad DeLosa and Mitch Hewitt, picking up valuable points for the overall award.